I think we can start now. Uh, hello everybody, thanks for coming. This is a talk about Migrate and well, I hope you uh, learn many things about Migrate today. Uh, I will introduce myself. I'm Ignacio Sanchez. I'm a Drupal developer at Bluespark. And if you have any question, you can con my, contact me by Twitter, email, Drupal.org, or even my blog. Okay? I'm a member of the Spanish Drupal Association and an individual member of the Drupal Association. I will uh, show you uh, migrate in four steps. Uh, one is the which requirements we need to start a migration, which is the anatomy of a migration. After that we will see which is the, migrate, the migration framework itself. And we finally uh, see some performance tips to speed up our migration. Okay, let's see requirements. Migrate is in core, yeah. <laughs> uh, there are three modules in Migrate, in Drupal core. One is Migrate, another one is uh, Migrate Drupal, and the third one is Migrate Drupal UI. We only will see Migrate. Migrate Drupal and Migrate Drupal UI is a module to migrate Drupal 6 or Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 with a button. Okay, I don't like that because uh, you haven't got too much control, but it's, it's very powerful, okay? Uh, when you install Migrate, uh, uh, first a question, how many of you use Migrate in Drupal 7? Great, and anybody use Migrate in Drupal 8? <laughs> Great. Uh, when you use Migrate in Drupal 7, you have a dashboard of all of your migrate, of all of your migration with mm, how many nodes uh, are migrating, uh, how many nodes uh, have been migrated, uh, how many are not migrated yet. But in Drupal 8, you don't see that. You install migrate and you don't see any page of admin, you don't see anything, okay? So, if it's not UI, if it's not Rust, how can I execute a migration? You need to go country, okay? There are two modules, Migrate Tools and Migrate Plus. And you have to use Rust and Drupal 8.1 or superior, Drupal 8.2 right now. Uh, okay, let's see an anatomy of a migration, the easiest example. Uh, the workflow is you have a source, you process that source, and you have your Drupal 8, your destination. Easy. In files, we have four definitions, okay? YAML files or custom files. That, uh, this, those YAML files are your own custom files. And for plugins, you have page PHP files that could be or core plugins or your custom plugins, okay? And you have many types of plugins, source, process, destination, builder, and ID map. Let's see the easiest example. In config install, we have the config file, article node, for example. We have an ID, our ID of our migration, and you have three blocks, source, destination and process, okay? Source is where we take the data. Destination is our entity and process is which field relates with what other field, okay? Title is title, ID is our node ID, easy. And this is our PHP plugin. We need to create an plugin that extends SQL base or Drupal SQL base if we enable Drupal migrate and with this annotation tell here article node. 
this article node is exactly the same as this. Is this one, okay? We add our query as usual query. We have another function that are fill. Here we define some fields that we are provide to our YAML file or our migration. And get IDs. Get IDs is we, uh, how we relate all nodes, all data with new data. We configure the connection to the legacy database, localhost or lab as usual. Okay, and with migrate tools, we have trust command. Okay, and we execute. We can execute uh, migrate status, migrate import, uh, migrate roadback, migrate stop, and execute our migration. Article node. We have 128 nodes. Execute that migration status. All of the nodes are imported, and we can make a rollback. Okay, this is the easiest example with an article, no more fields, the easiest. And for me, it's easier than Drupal 7. We have only two files to edit and our trash commands. Too easy. But let's see the migration framework itself. The most common plugins as source plugins and process plugins. Source, we take the data from somewhere. Process, we place the data, store the data in our Drupal 8. And we have some destination plugins and if you want to see how many plugins are, you can take a look at this, at this directory, okay? Source, here we tell SQL base or Drupal SQL base, which database is the source. In the source, we have our plugin, article node, and the key and the legacy. Key and legacy are these places, these, these items of the array, okay? We define our migration and that's fine. And in the source, which plugin will make the query? Okay, as we say before, in our query, we select articles from the legacy database and these five fields. We define these fields here. These fields are promoted to, um, well, we see later, are promoted to process a block of the YAML file. Get IDs is where we relate the old IDs with the new IDs and prepare row. Prepare row uh, was in Drupal 7 too. And we can modify some data and calculate some data or, as we want, okay? And destination is how and where we store the data. Normally, we use an entity, node, user, file, comment, normally, okay? But we, but we can create our new uh, destination plugins. But the, mo the, the common is entity node, entity user, entity comment. Uh, need more destination plugins? Search for destination in, in the in core. And you will see many, many destination plugins. If you need to see another example. ID mapping. This is very important because uh, the most powerful tool about Migrate is this for me. You, you have always the, uh, the information about the old row with the new row, the old data with the new data. The node 7 in our cake PHP is the node 100 in our Drupal 8. So this a table told this to us. And because they have a hash as Drupal 7, that could track changes between the old database with the new database. OK. 
process, how we transform its field, file, data, okay? If uh, in our OR database uh, we have um, a location object with latitude, longitude, uh, maybe we want to transform it to Drupal 8. We have to add a new process plugin, okay? And here you are able to map fields, same field in both sides, modify, add new fields, calculated or by default. For example, map fields. We, in the query, select in the legacy database the title, okay? So in our process block, this title is our column name in Drupal 8, okay? And this title is the column name of the legacy database, of the legacy table, okay? The same value. Title is title. Easy. Default value. For example, in our KPHP, we, have, we haven't got any uh, content type. We are notes or articles. So by default, we are a default value, and the default value is article. Body format, plain text, for example. User zero, status zero, as we want, okay? Callable is another plugin for process. You want to call a PHP function. In this example, let's see at the time. Uh, here, if you want to use this plugin, this function has to be defined if you put it in the index PHP of Drupal. Okay? If this function is you can't call it in, in index PHP, you can't put it here. Uh, the dupe entity. If, for example, the username could be the same in the legacy database, in Drupal 8, you can't add the same uh, user ID. So you can't dupe entity with a postfix and entity type field is an example of, of Drupal, for example. Migration. For me, is the most important plugin process in Drupal. Uh, this is how you use another migration in your migration. I mean, uh, for nodes, you need a user, maybe you need a file, and maybe you need uh, related nodes, for example, okay? So when you migrate these nodes, the users have to be migrated before. So this is the plugin, okay? You migrate 10 users, and the seven users has the user ID 10, okay? This user 10 create a node with a node ID 11, for example. So this plugin relates the 10 user with the 11 node in our Drupal 8, okay? If you, you, if you don't use these plugins, these migration plugins, you, will, you could have problems with rollbacks. It's very important to use that plugin. Maybe it's difficult to understand in, in when you start doing migrations, but spend time here, very important, okay? Uh, for example, this term is a field, but there is no here. So where we take this data? We create a new field in our field function. We define here the terms, and we add here the term itself. In our prepare row, we select in the table terms our term with condition one or whatever and set source property our terms with terms, okay? Here you put the, this value to here, to here, and finally to the migration, to the node migration. Mm. Another example, uh, hierarchical uh, taxonomies, uh, the parent term. You can use the same 
migration to migrate this, this taxonomy chain. Okay? This is an example taken from a migrate examples that are already in code. In code. Uh, custom plugins. Okay, I see many plugins in core, but I need a specific functionality to do there. So you can do your custom plugins. For example, in this plugin, I copy uh, some files from our Drupal 8. Okay, we query those files, create our plugin, and this path name this path and this name, we take it from here. And in our prepare row, we calculate this file path, add to Drupal, and our file name and add to Drupal. Okay? And transform. I want to show you the difference of transform and prepare row. In transform, you can process some fields, but in a prepare row, you can do it that. What is the difference? Prepare row is executed before any migration. Before you execute any migration, you do a migrate status and prepare row is executed. You do a DRAS migrate import article node limit 10 and you have a thousand nodes, prepare row is executed a thousand times. But transform is only executed 10 times. That is your limit, for example. Okay? A transform is used when you want to copy some things that you are already doing that migration. I mean, uh, I want to copy one picture and I want to prepare the path of that picture or I want to uh, crop that picture. Prepare the name in prepare row. Crop the picture in transform because you're modifying things, okay? And you do anything. Uh, here I put an example of print because you can debug, uh, debug with xdebug your draft or your PHP scripts, but maybe it's difficult for some people, okay? You get, mm, it's difficult to configure. So with print, you, you can see which variable or, or value has this variable. Uh, you want more core plugins? There are many core plugins. Uh, Concat, Extra, Flutter, Get, and more. And you have the examples all in core. Okay, in core you have many, many, many examples, a lot of examples. And you only have to search plugin and that uh, plugin itself or search for plugin access. Okay. Do you want more? You can take a look at core modules migrate SRC plugin migrate in every module if has a, um, a, a, a migrate template, you have many examples in Colon. You can search again with migrate source, destination, migrate tags. Really full of examples. I learned migrate with migrate examples and core itself. And a uh, I want to give you some performance tips that for me are very useless, but maybe it's not your, uh, if you have a little migration, maybe it's not needed, okay? The first to ask you have to ask you, do I have to migrate everything? If I, if I have a commerce, I have to migrate every product Yes, maybe yes. Would I have to migrate every order? Maybe I only have to migrate the orders since here and three months before. I don't want to migrate since to 2006. 
maybe it's not needed. Um, is this migration fast enough? I mean, this migration spends one hour. Is for me okay? I need to overperformance that migration? Yes, I need, okay. We can start by dropping indexes. On every insert, if you have index, the indexes are rebuilt. So at the start of any migration, you drop all of the indexes and after all of migrations, restart all of the indexes. And this is a, a kind of slow process, but uh, when you have to migrate uh, a million nodes, this is very useful, very, very useful. And it's not so much code. You have to uh, open PHP Miami, MySQL Workbench, and see which fields or which columns have, has the indexes, drop it, and start again, okay? Uh, can I have some hardware improvements? Can I migrate our database server to SSD? Can I put it to RAM in RAM in TMFS? Can I do write 10? Can I use a better CPU? Maybe. If we are in a cloud, we can change our server to SSD, execute the migration, and get back. Okay, but I think every uh, database server needs, needs an SSD. So, the seven functionalities. Uh, can I disable some modules before the migration? Maybe uh, one that Mm, creates many hooks or do some things that I don't need? Can I disable hooks and modules? Yes, no. Incremental migration. This is very useful, but it's a bit slower, slower than, than a common migration. Track changes, when you activate it, every row is hashed and stored in the in the column hash. So if the hash change, the migrate knows that hey, this node changed. I have to migrate it. Instead of migrate everything a thousand times the same migration. Okay? You can incremental, you can do an incremental migration of a million nodes. Start on Monday and stop ends on Sunday, for example. I have to execute every week or with track changes every morning with these million nodes. I only have to migrate or update a thousand or 500. Maybe this is very useful. Okay. More things. Multi-thread migration. When you execute a migration in Drupal 7 is, is the same. Uh, Drush or PHP executes only in one thread. And if your server, if your front-end server has four CPUs, there are one CPU at 100% and three CPUs at either. Uh, I want to use the four CPUs, okay? There is many articles in in internet that shows you how to configure trust to execute on many CPUs, two, four, as you want. Okay. Uh, but I uh, use that. I name it multi-divided migration. I don't know why, but and the reason is you have to divide your million nodes. This is a, an example of a previous project that I have to migrate a half million nodes with no the comments, no comments are half million nodes. And we break our migration in four migration. Uh, for one, two, 
thousand, a thousand to two thousand. Okay. Why? Because uh, because I can execute with an ampersand or with more consoles the same migration anytime at parallel. So we have if we have four CPUs, I execute, I prepare my migration with three cuts of the database and execute the four at the same time. This time the database was a bit stressed, so we have to uh, divide in three blocks. But uh, we, our migration uh, initially took three days and with this solution took only one day. Okay, it's many, many times. How can we do that in Drupal 8? Uh, we use the same plugin, CM article, for example, and we add here two parameters, 400 to 800, and here we take uh, the mean is mm, uh, 400, and we add in the query function, and we bypass, uh, we cut the, the migration. You have, if you use this solution, it's a bit tricky, uh, you have to take care that there are uh, no more nodes related with uh, between 400 and 800 and 1000 and 2000. If the same node is used in node 500 and 1000, you have to take care. Okay, you have to see uh, the queries very well because you can get some inconsistencies. Okay, and I have here an example because I don't found anyone. Uh, here, custom migration is uh, you create a Drupal 7, uh, generate a thousand nodes, and put that. Uh, migration enable and you can see if you execute three times this this migration you could see the three CPUs at 100% you need mm, three CPUs and another more for your database you can do it in your local host maybe it will broke okay and for me the most important thing common sense Okay, mm, we are programmers and we use common sense for many things. Here is very important to use common sense. If you smell that uh, this migration could break in some case or we can improve in another tip, maybe we have to try. Because migration for me is a very critical process because you execute it in the final stage of your process. I mean, uh, it can be wrong or it can spend too much time. If it spends uh, two days in a migration, maybe you could have problems. If you prepare it for hit one button and the migration is ready, it's, it's better for me, I think. And that's all. I think a bit, a bit quicker, but if you have any questions. Hi. Hi. Do I need this off? People can hear me, I'm quite loud. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about dropping the indexes and restoring them for performance reasons, you had them on a pre-import and post-import function, but I couldn't see which class that belong to where you were overriding mm. that. Where do they live? Uh, I don't remember exactly the name of the class, but it's one of the tips of Drupal org. So um, I can tell you later. I don't remember exactly the, the class. Okay. So uh, and the other question I was going to ask is with the strategy of having four separate migration 
with different IDs for, um, for performance reasons. Does that mean that the migrate maps will have separate tables and then your use of the migrate process plugin won't be reliable? Well, um, I think in, in this tricky solution, you have to store the same ID of the old database. And you, if you have the same ID, you map the old ID to the new ID, uh, the inconsistencies maybe couldn't be happen because you are you use the same ID. I don't know if I ask your question. No, I don't know either. <laughs> well, I have a thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your presentation and the model, of course. Uh, I have a question about uh, content which might have a relation to self. For example, uh, I have uh, a list of budget numbers that relate to some other budget numbers, but they are all in the same list. Um, from what I've experienced, I didn't experience any problems with that, but that might be coincidental. Or um, can you tell a little bit more about how to approach that? Yeah, I think uh, you could use two migration. One, to migrate every node, and another one to migrate this field itself. So if you have a related article, for example, uh, I think I could use the migrate the nodes, and after that, another migration to relate it, uh, that. More questions? Okay, you can talk me <laughs> in the hall if you have any question. There is no problem. So, <laughs> thank you, and it was very helpful for me if you evaluate this session, if you like it, if you don't like it, if, okay? Thank you. <laughs>